So I want to transition into Summer League. And I wanted to get kind of your impressions. Who impressed you the most last night? The obvious name is Mr. Clintman. He was all over the place, both sides of the floor, doing just a little bit of everything, playing defense on multiple different positions. Um, he did an awesome job stopping like three or four transition buckets from the Sixers, which is a huge place where the Pistons struggled at last season. And you're starting to see why he got that improved contract that kind of came up out of nowhere because there was a lot of talk about him spending time in the G League. But the way he played, and again, you kind of got to just, you know, eyeball it and guess at this point because he hasn't played with the starters. But the things he was doing, like even like the short roll uh, drop off that he gave to Ron that gave him that floater in the second quarter. Just simple things like that they didn't have. It's like that simple, no, oh, I got to move the ball. He's open here. Like his ability to catch and shoot from the corner, his ability to orchestrate from the top of the key. Like he just did a lot of things that I was not expecting at all. Um, and knowing, again, how they need, they really need a solidified stretch forward for the future. They don't have that at this point. And I'm not even saying he's going to be that. But what we saw in the game, even despite a loss, was extremely encouraging, mad efficient, um, scored 13 points, five assists, five boards, the stuff the stats. He was all over the place. Like he kind of, and, it, it, and you don't, don't let's not go too far, but he was filling kind of that Draymond role very well for the summer league team on top of the ability to shoot too. And that, that I think is a huge have. So if he keeps developing and if he's what we think he can be based on that game, I really like this kid's upside. He did a phenomenal job in that game yesterday. He was my MVP yesterday, too. I think Easily. he stole the show. I think a lot of people were really focused on Ron Holland because he was the fifth overall pick. And right. um, maybe there wasn't as much pressure and spotlight on uh, Bobby. Um, Bobby or Bobby? I hope it's Bobby so we can have uh, to Toby and Bobby 2.0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, but to your point, man, like he kind of looked like a point forward out there. Five assists, I think, kind of went under look. But if you watch the games last night, he was looking for his teammates if there were if he got doubled or he was just looking for the open man. He's just a really smart basketball player. He does a, he does everything like pretty good. There's not like something he does that's like absolutely elite. To your point, there was a play where he was on the opposite end. Uh, I think it was in the corner three, and he rushed back to contest his shot late yes. in the fourth quarter. Like yep. his defensive effort, his instinct to play the passing lanes, like this kid. I think I see why Trajan Langdon and the Pistons gave him a standard contract. I expect him, if he keeps playing like that, he will definitely be in the rotation. It's hard to argue against it. Again, I know it's early, but again, it's just, it's things that he was doing that you can't teach or maybe shouldn't have to teach. Like you're going to, you're going to preach it to the players. Oh, effort this and make that extra pass. He's doing that already. And even if you looked at like the first quarter, like they had maybe two or three plays where they were so unorganized on offense they were heaving up last second shot clock inspiring shots and they just weren't settling it at all. But when he was getting more involved, I think it was the second half too. That third quarter was probably their best quarter that they played, second and third quarter. When he was on ball and orchestrating and setting guys up and finding cutters, you saw a lot more movement on the floor um, when he was playing that point forward role. Knowing that you have Kay Cunningham who can post, J.B. Bickerstaff, again, we're going to talk about him. He said he wants to use Jaden Ivey in movement way more often. Having a forward being able to kind of be that lead guy to get those guys looks and get them open because last season that was this was one of my biggest pet peeves. That was Jalen Duran, they were kind of doing that with. He played a lot of time at the top of the key with the ball if he wasn't doing screen and rolls with Cade. And I hated that because he's a big guy. Put him on the block, find a four that can go get him the ball instead of having him throw lobs up to beef stew who's six seven. Having a guy like Bobby, if he can translate with the guys around him that we're talking about. That is going to be a huge dynamic that this team can open up. I'm really excited to see what he can do moving forward. I think listening to a lot of interviews, as I, I went down um, YouTube today, his pre-draft um, video with, uh, I want to say it was the ringer with Kevin O'Connor. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, when I was over in Australia in the NBL, you know, the coach asked me, I need you to be the energy guy, just the defense guy. And he said, I'm very confident in my game that if you need me to be the energy guy, I could be that guy. You need me to take shots and make threes, I can be that guy. He seems like one of those glue players where saying, okay, I need you to just to shoot threes tonight. 
he'd probably do it. I need you to lock down the best defender or the best uh, offensive player tonight. He'd probably do it. And w- when I kind of look at him as a player, he kind of mentioned like players that he like looks at himself as. He said like Nick Batum, Michael Porter Jr., and Tobias Harris. When I was watching him like play like shoe offensively, I kind of saw the Tobias Harris stuff he was talking about, but I. Mm-hmm. He's just such an interesting player, man. Like, I don't know where they're going to slot him. Like, I think he could play small forward, but he, maybe he plays power forward. He, he's just so versatile, and he has guard skills, too. It's just like they might have got a steal with him in the second round. Yeah, I really wasn't expecting it at all. Um, again, some of the stuff that he's able to bring, again, having the, the switchability, the intelligence on the floor, just that kind of stuff is just so valuable, especially for a young team that's trying to really find themselves. And especially in summer league, like I'm a forward basketball player. We all hoop at the Y or lifetime or wherever. When guys go just play, especially in summer league, they just trying to get their shots up. They just trying to go show what they can do, showcase themselves. They're not playing the most like defined team basketball, which is kind of understandable to a point. He was not doing that. He understood spacing. He understood where guys were supposed to be. He's talking on the floor. Again, these are just things that you, in a young player, you would probably have to teach at a point, but he was already hitting that. Again, I'm not sure that was communicated from Jared Jack or what it was, but he did a fantastic job being that like that extended coach on the floor, especially when he got the ball more and became more active with his team. But yeah, he's he's giving them something different that they haven't had in a while. If he can, it just adds, again, knowing that they have a lot of forwards at this point now, they didn't have one that they could be looked forward to for the future because a lot of them are on short-term deals. If he keeps going and he's playing like this, especially as a defender too, the, the sky's the limit for this guy. I really would really want to see what he does with the starting lineup for real. Yeah, same here. I mean, like if, if he keeps taking progression um, and developing his game, to your point, yeah, the sky's the limit with him. There's one more player I did want to talk about. Um, it impressed me. Maybe I'm just a sicko because I, I like I like the underdog. I, I, I like the story. And that was Donis Jenkins, who mm-hmm. is a two-way guy. Mm-hmm. Dude, I love this pace. He seemed yeah. so under control. Didn't seem like he really rushed anything out there. I, I think, you know, before the uh, third quarter started, he was perfect. He was like three for three. Um, he had a block that Jared Jack did contest. Uh, I think that was the play you were talking about earlier. Yep. He just seems like a really sound uh, point guard. And it's really rare you see that of und- undrafted guys like that. I ain't going to lie. Like, yes, he was fantastic. I was really impressed watching him on both ends of the floor. The guys who were the most impressive were the new guys. And, Greg, I know it's only just one player that's returning on the roster with Marcus Sasser. The guys who were shining and looking like the more, like, complete, defined players who understood, like, team dynamics were the guys who haven't been here yet. That that shocked me. I love watching him play. Jace Johnson deserves a lot of credit as well. He mm-hmm. was all over the place. Like, another problem I've had with, like, Piston Biggs is, like, when they get, like, passes on the block, they drop a lot of those passes. He had great hands. He wasn't bringing it down low. He's going up strong, had a – awesome and one in the second half he let some energy out these young guys that they're playing with again wins aside because i'm not looking at wins right now i'm just looking at baseline team basketball and how you adjust quarter by quarter the young guys who are just stepping into these positions look fantastic jenkins is one of them like you said johnson really showed that he could be somebody that's effective as well i think they got some real talent that should shine during the summer league i'm really excited for these guys 